Would you guys like to know how much revenue a pizza shop generates? With four locations and pizzas that sell out three months in advance, you're in for a shock. I'm gonna share with you how I took this credit card and under $60,000 created a $3.6 million pizza empire. All right, Lee, so we're standing outside one of your locations here in Seattle. And why don't you tell us about this place and why it's important? This is the West Seattle Moto, the original first location. It is important because it really is the beginning of our story where we uh, had to leave the hospitality industry because of COVID and this was our pivot. So I needed to keep it small. I need to keep it efficient. And I found this beautiful little house and this is where the but story the begins. That's hilarious. You were able to get it zoned for commercial use? Yes, it okay. was a residential. And then because of these two places were actually bidding to get it, they're a holdout. That's yeah. why everybody calls it the up house. And that's why I put balloons up top. Oh, that's hilarious. All right, Lisa, tell us a little bit about your background and why you decided to open your first pizza shop. I have a very strong hospitality background. My wife and I owned a little boutique hotel. And of course, as with many businesses, COVID killed us. And my quick pivot was, let's open a pizza shop because I made it as a kind of hobby thing. And I was yeah. like, that's what I want to do. It was my retirement plan. Yeah. And then when we opened this, much to our surprise, it blew up. So with the, really? the increase in demand, I had to be close to it mm -hmm. because I'm putting in, you know, 12, 14, 15 hours a day. So we moved right here. Just right next door. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah, super easy, yeah. super efficient. It just made the business more efficient. And yeah. that's what I'm all about is efficiency. Yeah. So why pizza? Are you just super into it? And, or did you see a business opportunity there? I'm super into it, but also like I'm about community and there is no better way to share love, hope, yeah. ideas around food. Yeah. And because I love pizza so much, I wanted to create something around that, but I wanted something really unique. And so when you bring something unique together, like you go to a special place to eat, you talk about that, right? And it becomes something that you have in common. Yeah. So I wanted my pizzas to be really unique and very different, which they are, and people do talk about it. And it becomes this thing to create community. So is this normal for pizzas to be sold out three months in advance in the industry? Or even a week in advance? <laughs> I've never heard of it. And I didn't know this was gonna happen myself. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey guys, have you ever heard of pizzas being sold out three months in advance? Well, neither have I. Stick around to find out. Lee is gonna share some tips on how you can create the same amount of hype that he did for any product you choose. What was the total cost to get this business going and where did that initial expense go towards? So I didn't have any money. So I used my credit card and I put this business on $60,000. It was risky. <laughs> But uh, I wanted to take a swing at it because I didn't want to get a job. I want to stay an entrepreneur. And that's been the dream, right? Mm. So when I got that 60,000, that included getting this place, putting a down payment on it, doing the, the paperwork with the city to convert it, working with the architect to have everything done. The electrical had to be done by permit, but everything else I built. This is pegboard that I bought from the um, home Home Improvement Center, all of these are like on sale or cheap. So really basic what I did for that 60,000 to get the business up. So it all went into equipment. It went into the first orders of product and small things like this. So this is what I began my business with. I bought this from a lady on uh, Bashan Island. This is what's called a dough trowel. This is how they made bread in the 18th century. Really? And when I started, I wanted to do it craft style, right? Again, you can use a bowl but I wanted to do it in a very um, traditional way, but my own twist on it. The All beginning right. of a moto pizza. And why is this, uh, this shape? Why isn't it the bigger ones? This is developed with the idea of the stadium pizza, which is a kind of a crazy idea that I came up with while I was in the car, eating food, parked, and on my phone at the same time. And I had sloppy food, had my phone, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. This phone is so tidy and so neat. It was yeah. kind of inspired by my phone and the food I was holding. And I was like, how do we make this neat? Yeah. Right? And so. Rectangle this. pizza. And then I started thinking, how, how am I going to sell this? And then I started thinking events. And then it led to music things and then bigger and then stadiums. I'm like, how do I get this into a stadium? Wow. So I called my friend who worked for a, a soccer team and said, hey, how can I get in the stadium? She goes, I don't know. And then on a Friday, I meet two guys and they're from New York and they're like, man, we love your pizza. I'm like, what are you doing here? And they're like, we work for the stadium. 
And I said, how do I get my pizza? Who do I have to talk to to get wow. my pizza yeah. in the stadium? And he goes, me. No and way. the process went. It took about two weeks to get all the meetings put together and everything like that. And here we are. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah. Chance. But it's from talking to everybody yep. about what you do. Once again, uh, this came from the secret of what I was talking about mm -hmm. later. Okay. All right, so tell us where we're at. We are at T-Mobile Stadium, home of the Mariners, where we just are opening up our new location. Let's go check it out. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about employee culture. How many employees do you have? We have almost 40 employees. Over four locations? Yes. Is that going to need to exponentially increase yes. because of the stadium? Yes. So how many do you think you're going to have in the next year? I think by the end of this year, I think we'll be maybe close to 100 because we're already starting to work. We're working deals right now for our five, uh, location five, six, and seven. Oh, snap. So it's going to happen pretty fast. And uh, talk to us about pay. How much are people starting pay and how much does it go up to? OK, so we pay $24 an hour plus tips. I think that puts them right around 32 maybe. Wow. Um, and then we pay health That's insurance awesome. also. You know, you keep people longer, your costs are down on hiring, rehiring, training, mm -hmm. all of those aspects of labor costs. In the long run, I think it's worth it. Any other important things to do with employee culture? I think the idea of us all doing this together and saying we're all in it together, that's one thing to say it, but to practice it is another thing. We're not gonna be perfect, but we can support each other when we're not perfect. Yeah, any other tips for business owners on like practically carrying that out, the support feeling within the em employees? Shut up and listen. Like, what I'm, I'm not telling you to shut up, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying like, listen, like really hear what they have to say. It's really easy as a boss or a manager or any place in authority to just say, hey, it's my way or the highway. But if you just are quiet and listen, they'll give you enough to where you know what the needs are and you'll be able to find a place to meet them. That's good. Kaylee, tell us where we're at. We're at our Belltown location in downtown Seattle at the number three moto. If you were to start all over again, what would you do and what would be your advice for somebody who maybe doesn't have a lot of cash on hand? I think the simplest way of doing it with very little cash would be do something out of your home. That's a really simple way to start that I think you could probably do for under $500. Okay, get your foot in the door. Get your foot in the door. All right. You know, you start using social media. That's a really popular thing right now with these so-called home pop-ups. Yeah. And so I think that's the first and cheapest way to start. That's really smart. Okay, what's the next level? The next level would be uh, maybe a farmer's market. Get like a small oven that you can buy maybe for five or $600 that mm -hmm. runs off of propane gas or even wood fired if they let you. And so I, you could probably do that for under 2000. So what's the next step up from the farmer's market then? The ghost kitchen where a business has put like 10 or 12 kitchens in and you can rent that one kitchen. And a lot of ghost kitchens will do month to month. Mm -hmm. So you can do a test run of what your product is and see what that is before you do a huge investment. Oh. So you could probably get into a ghost kitchen for maybe $3,000, get all your okay. product going, put all your ads out or whatever you need to do. So I think you can maybe get away with a $5,000, $6,000 start on Not a bad. ghost kitchen. Not bad, okay. Yeah. And anything else after that? Just starting the restaurant? <laughs> get a restaurant and rent it. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's big money. Yes. Yeah. What do you think makes Moto Pizza different than other pizza parlors, and how does that give you a competitive advantage? That's a great question. What makes us different is the ingredients I use. I use my Filipino background, um, but I also make the pie differently. Uh, my pizza experience of making Roman that I really love, Roman style, which is really light, um, the Midwest style, which is deep dish, and East Coast style, what I call gritty, like a New York pizza. And I can combine it all together. And then I started making different types of sauces that people aren't used to, like my banana ketchup, you know, which is really <laughs> unique. So this is what wow. differentiates me. The thing that also gives me the competitive advantage is the highest quality of caliber of my food. Like when I lift that quality up, it really elevates what we do as pizza. And of course, our fantastic customer service. Everybody comments how wonderful our people are. Yeah. Uh, the combination of that just kind of lists us beyond and above yeah. in, in all competition. Yeah. Is, is that uniqueness kind of create this viral sense about your business with the, the crazy flavors that you have? Absolutely. And I think uh, something that a lot of people don't touch on, especially in business, like I like to think that when you think competitively versus creatively, when you're thinking competitively, you're thinking about what that other person's doing. When you think creatively, you think about what you're doing and you put the energy in that. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think competitively. I think, what am I doing right here? How can I do it the best? 
And as I focus on that and put all the energy in that, I create a product that's outstanding and it's a full expression of who I am. Yeah. Find a way to express yourself fully. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Because when you find that full expression of who you are, that's going to really resonate out there in, in, in what you're doing and how you're doing. No matter what genre you're in, whether it's art, food, tech, doesn't matter. So this is the third location you've opened in two years? Yes. Okay, so... Well, we'll... technically fourth, because all four locations, which include the stadium, yeah. have all been a done deal now. Okay, great. So your revenues are probably looking pretty good at this point? Looking pretty good. Yeah, okay, well, what are the, what's that valuation out then? Well, when we did our first round, our seed round, um, our valuation became $3.6 million. $3.6 on the first seed round of valuations. Okay, yes. and it's just gonna go up from there. It's gonna go up from there. Wow, so what are you actually netting off of that $3.6 million then? I will tell you that over a shared pizza. Ooh, okay, you gotta stick around and find out. So what was in the thinking of converting this from a house into a business? Is there just no other good commercial locations available? There are plenty of good locations available, but one of the secrets that I found in doing business was you always hear location, 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 yep. but I like to think, make it an adventure, have them come find you, make mm. it a destination place. Mm -hmm. So this is off the main street. It's in a neighborhood that's far from central downtown, but I wanted something that was really unique. So I chose it because it was really unique. It's between two giant buildings. Mm -hmm. You rarely see something like this. So it had a lot of visual appeal to me and what I wanted to do. And I liked that it enclosed it so that way I can kind of manufacture this space in a creative way and really express what Moto is gonna be. That's cool. So it really gives off a vibe that you're going for when people come here and see this setup. Absolutely. If you come down here on any Friday night or Saturday night, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever, the vibe here is very unique wow. and special. I love that. Because of that reason. You heard the story of the why, but on the business side, I've been inspired by what I do here, um, by the night markets of Asia and Europe in all my travels. I love how these, in these night markets, there's small tents and they put out a ton of food really quickly, like two people will put out yep. hundreds of plates in one night. So the reason I chose this house is I wanted, it's only 500 square feet. So I wanted it to be a small footprint so we can be really fast, efficient. The movement of the product is really close to itself and that we could put something out really, really fast in volume with a small yeah. amount of people. I wanna to thank today's sponsor, which is Factor. Factor will change your approach to dieting in a good way. Cause let's be honest, it's easier to just order pizza than it is to cook. Factor creates meals that are approved by dietitians and made from fresh, never frozen ingredients. That's right, never frozen. All you have to do is handpick your favorite meals from a selection of 34 or more chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options. It's easy to add more meals, reduce the quantity, or even skip a week when necessary. Their professionally prepared meals arrive prepackaged and ready to be consumed in just two minutes. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. And it tastes so good, wow. So if you're ready to take the easy way to clean eating, go to factor75.com or click the link in the description box below. And don't forget to use the code UPFLIP50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's right, Factor is offering 50% off your first box. So use the code UPFLIP50, click the link in the description below, and enjoy delicious, nutritious meals sent straight to your doorstep. So this was your very first location, right? Any mistakes that you made during this process that helped you when you were expanding out to the other locations? <laughs> a lot of mistakes, Caleb. Big, big story. Coming. Yeah, so what I did not anticipate was my success. And I think in planning something, you should plan for success, right? So the stairs, the physical aspect, bringing up product and, and customers carrying product down the stairs, I would have definitely went flat because now oh, I'm ordering oh, yeah. stuff by the pallet, and so it takes a lot of labor yeah, to bring them up the stairs, so there's that. The second thing is power. This was a residential house, so it's single phase. Mm -hmm. This little single phase oven puts out a really good product, but it's not my dream product. A higher a, a heat oven makes my pizza even better. Yeah. So I need more power. Yeah. So there, are, these are the th biggest things that I had to learn. The yeah. space too, walls are in my way. So less walls in my production will help, but it does fit the whole kind of flow of what I talk about with efficiency. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. Mm. So one of my things I love to say is fail to scale. Meaning like make all your mistakes while you're small. Mm. And then as you scale up, those mistakes that you make now 
they're not as costly. So right now a mistake for me might be a couple thousand dollars, yeah. but down the road in 20 locations, it could be $2 yes. million, dollars, right? Yeah. So fail to scale. So I'm learning this now while we're small. So make all your mistakes early, right? <laughs> yeah, and get then, them out and of the then, way. Yeah, get them out of the way as you grow the business. Cool. All right, it's blitz time. Blitz you got, time! You got 10 seconds to answer these questions. Can you do it? Oh, I'll do it faster than Ted. Oh, all right. Aaron asks, how are you competing with the other big brands like Papa John's and Domino's? I don't think competitively, I think creatively. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I like to think, how can we do it better? How can we do it faster? And how can we do it with better customer service? Those three things are my key points in beating them. Love it. Matthew asks, what is the hardest part of marketing a pizza shop? I don't think it's hard at all. I, I, I'm actually having fun doing it. You just build a good pizza and word gets out. Laporta asks, why did you start during a pandemic and why did you choose the menu you did? I had no choice to start in the pandemic because I didn't want to work for somebody else. And choosing the menu that I wanted to, there's seafood in it, crab, clams, and shrimp. And I love all three of those. They're Northwest items, and I wanted to feature the Northwest, mm. which includes like our mushroom and our plant too. Last question, Culinary Century asks, how much money would you typically need to start a pizza restaurant? I have no idea. I, I like, to, for like <laughs> a legit pizza restaurant, I don't know. I, I would think 300,000 to actually do a full on brand new pizza restaurant. All right, good job, you did it. All right, man, man, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> So I'm a new customer. I'm seeing you on Instagram, TikTok. You guys are going viral. I come in to get a pizza and I'm ready to try this delicious beast. What are you going to tell me when I come to the counter if you guys are booked out three months? Yeah, and you don't know that we're sold out. Yeah. Yeah. First thing I do is like, hey, thanks for coming. What's your name? Caleb. Caleb, I'm Lee. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet thanks you. Thanks for making the trip yeah, out here. Super excited to try your pizza. I would be super excited for you to try it too. However, we are sold out until August. The only what? way to get our pizza is online. Follow me on Instagram, uh -huh. and I promise you, you'll get yourself a pizza here. In the what? meantime, I have a awesome consolation prize for you. Some of our ice cream. Ooh. Have some more ice cream for the road. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Really sorry that we couldn't do this for you Dang. today. Well, can't you just like make me a quick pizza? Like, sorry, you can't there, slip one in? We have no pies left for you today. Okay, so three months out till I can literally eat your pizza. Yes. Okay. What's the best way for a pizza shop to attract new customers to their location? Like I said earlier, I think just talking about what you do and sharing it with everybody, I think is the key thing that I okay. did to get the ball rolling. And I think that's what created excitement. And then also the idea of that customer coming, when they come, engaging them and getting them to come back. Mm -hmm. I think building our business with regular customers was probably our number one um, strategy on building that because when we took extra good care of them, they were telling their friends. I had a lot of people that said, oh, my friend Bob, he told me I gotta come here and try this. Yeah. And when you look at our ratings and stuff, you'll see how they say we're so nice and we're so enthusiastic and all of mm. these things. I think that was the number one thing that we did oh. in, get in building the business. Okay, what do you think about paid advertising like Facebook, Instagram, Google ads? I don't know, I have never used it. Really? <laughs> yeah, I haven't okay. spent a dime on ads at all. Whoa, okay, no yeah. advertising costs. Zero advertising okay. costs. That's impressive, good. So earlier we mentioned you got three month wait to get a pizza. So what are some tips on how to create hype for any product? Wow, that's a, that hype is a tough word, right? But I'll tell you how I did it. Whatever you're doing with your product, talk to everybody about it. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody. Many of the connections that I made either led me to somebody that was interested in knowing and doing a story, or they spread the word and I was contacted by it. I think the second thing is, I think people don't realize the power of social media. Like I w am not a social media guy, but when I started doing this, I really fell in love with it. And as I started kind of studying it, I understand the power of it. You gotta yeah. get people to interact with you. You gotta get people involved. You gotta get people excited. Yeah. So some people like to keep their personal life and their business life separated. They don't like to put their face on things, but that just is not gonna fly if you wanna have hype, is that what you're saying? Yes, I think so, because people wanna know the story and that's what creates the hype. Also collaborations, like, hey, can I collaborate with you? Like other people, there's so many ways of doing it. Just be creative in thinking of how can I get my product out there and it's not gonna cost you a lot of money. Yeah, okay. So how do you go about building a distinctive brand in this business? I think when you use the word distinctive, I think it just says, how do you do something different, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that begins with 
what we're doing. You know, round pizzas typically are what's known. We yep. do a square pizza. Yeah. Darker colors are what's the norm in everywhere in food. When you go to a high-end restaurant or a fast food restaurant, it's pretty dull. There's not anything that's really bright. So yep. look at these boxes and the logo. Yeah. You know, these, these are beautiful, crazy colors. bright colors. Yeah. So just the branding alone is distinctive, you know, mm -hmm. utilizing these characters here that are really happy and positive, you know, and kind of yeah. excite people. Like, I think that's the beginning of just the brand itself. Yeah. And I think that is what kind of sets us apart and makes us distinct in yep. what we do. Absolutely. Keep folding. <laughs> All right, I got, I got stuck in here. <laughs> I'm folding two at once. There we go. So I know you're big on social media, right? So tell us what platforms you're using and how you go about posting stuff on there. I am a huge fan of social media. I love it. So mm -hmm. I would say my favorite platform is Instagram because that's the first platform I worked on and it's really user friendly and simple. So I would suggest anybody doing that, they want to keep it simple and they don't know it at all. I'd love Instagram for that reason. However, the like TikTok is one of the new ones that I'm new on. I think that has a lot of capability, especially for a business. Um, so I'm starting to engage on TikTok and I watch what that reaction is for each one and I start to develop or define who I am on that channel. Yeah. Is there one piece of advice or mindset shift that completely changed your business? It's from a fruit company out of California. They got rid of all the middle management and I love that idea. <laughs> And what it is, the idea is, this is the crew. There's no manager. And uh, when I'm not here and I'm at the other locations, what I love about these guys is they, they manage themselves through personal responsibility and being responsible for each other and looking out for each other yeah. and creating that culture. We don't need a manager here. We don't need a boss, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I, I think that's something really key that I could change the whole business model. Yeah. You know, if we can keep building on this culture and, and what this business could be, I think it could be huge. Yeah, and do you have to hire that or do you train that? It's both. I think it's in the hiring, making sure that they align with your vision, whether it's short term or long term, um, that alignment is really important. Hire slow, fire fast. Okay, and what do you look for when you're hiring new employees? I look for, you know, like I said, alignment, like kindness, good looking, like Adam right there. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> He's over there like flashing. <laughs> um, but like, I think kindness is really important. How they communicate is really important too. I don't look at all the resume okay. very hard. I look at the conversation that I have with them. Cool. Let's go check it out. Okay. Um, one of my favorite things is the art on the wall. These the light, the string lighting is supposed to kind of like stimulate the night markets that I love so much. All equipment, these are all our dough trays that are gonna be filled up with dough. Ooh. And we are walking into the cool. kitchen prep area. This is actually gonna have all those big silver silver tables are gonna be in here for dough preparation. And this is gonna be our walk-in where this yellow tape is. And then we're gonna have a line of refrigerators. This is all gonna be dough preparation. And then in here is the robot room. What? What is this beast? So this is Otis, our robot. We partnered with Picnic Robotics. This will do 150 pizzas an hour, and it works simply like this. We run our pizza right through here. It stops, and a laser reads it, yeah. and it goes through this door right here, comes through this refrigerated unit. It will fill it with cheese. It what? will slice the pepperoni stick and uh -huh. lay it onto the pizza, and then come through here and each one of these turning knobs is ingredients. So yeah. your onions, your mushrooms and everything will drop in there exactly wow. to the weight and the amount that you want it in. And then this right here, this is how you can e we can either do orders, but our POS system ties directly into this. So if you do an order, um, when we get this rolling, you're gonna be able to order your pizza and it's gonna go straight into here and make it and go down the line. Oh my gosh, okay. And then you'll get your time when it's ready, you'll get a text that your pizza's ready. Mm -hmm. So once it goes all through here, it comes through on the conveyor belt, goes through this giant beast of an oven, and then we pull it out here and do the preparation like we showed at at the earlier location. And then right. out it goes. Wow. And I've become this mad fan of technology. I think it's the future, and I think if you're not chasing that, um, you're gonna fall behind really fast. We are going to make a pepperoni pizza. We're not fully set up for the stadium, so this is our run and gun mode. Now we're gonna cheese it. So go ahead and grab some, brother. Spread it around, no, no edges yet? No, yeah, work that edge, work that okay. edge. Get it First around the edge. in the middle, now on the edge. 
All right, load up the pep. And I'm never shy with pepperoni. Pepperoni oh, lovers yeah, love yeah, pepperoni. Yeah, yeah. So load it up. Okay. Let's use this whole thing. You're doing good, bro. <laughs> you are a good pepperoni maker, my brother. All right. All right. So we're going to actually go right here. Okay. He's going to set it right there. We're going to come through. This is a little window that you can watch coming out. So this is set for five minutes and 30 seconds. And yeah. she's going to come out of here. You're going to do the same kind of stripes across like that, about an inch across from each right. other. And just go slow because, and they're diagonal, OK? Mm -hmm. So try it on that. All right. Oh, wait, slow, slow, slow. slow. There oh you go. Oh, my gosh. There you go. That's all right. That. That's all right. You're actually doing fantastic, dude. Yo, the pizza's in the house. All right, let's go over it. Net profit. So break us down some of the net profits and how much each location is raking in. OK, so um, let's let's go with a monthly basis, right? Um, so right now, each location is roughly averaging about $90,000 a month. OK, so we're at about an annual of about a million eighty thousand okay. top line uh, revenue. Top line. Our food costs are about twenty two percent roughly. Wow, that's pretty low. Yeah, and, and this is from being able to know what we're ordering out two, three months ahead. We yeah. know exactly what we need. Yeah. So we're able to keep that really tight, right? Yep. Our profit is probably about fifteen percent. Okay. Um, so that puts us, you know, about one fifty ish, but I think something that needs to be acknowledged is right now we're actually kind of throttling our production right now because we're growing so fast so we're being really careful about how we do that we haven't even added delivery yet we haven't added our alcohols yet even though we have our alcohol permit so there's a lot of verticals to add on top of this the potential of what we're going to do is easily 30 percent more Whoa. so I, I think you know and our mozzarella sticks our ice cream program like there's yeah. a lot of things that we haven't touched on yet so i'm anticipating this to be even higher yeah right now this is a super conservative number and i always tell you i like to work with those conservative numbers mm -hmm. and so that's kind of where we're at right there okay so uh in summary net profit is around what so we're about per location net totally clear between 150 and 180. But then there's the stadium, mm -hmm. and that is gonna be high volume, so we're just pushing them through. We're anticipating up to 1,200 to 1,500 pizzas a night. So we're in the middle of the season right now, so we only have a partial part of the season left when we're starting, and we're looking at maybe this year walking out of there with 250 clean uh, in profit, and then I think next year we're anticipating 500 in profit. Mm -hmm. So that you, that stadium is going to be a unique deal. All right. Have you ever lost faith in yourself or the business? And how did you overcome that? I think everybody, whether they lose faith or not lose faith, I think people hit a hard spot. Mm -hmm. The one thing I say to myself is put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said earlier, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. Just put one thing in it, it will always work itself out. So it's always the mentality of just take that one more step. Don't give up. Yeah, what are some of the breaking moments that you almost had? Like, were there any terrible days that just about broke you? Yes. When I first started doing the online orders, I accidentally erased $80,000 worth of orders. Accidentally erased? Accidentally like all the information out of the system? Everything and everybody's orders for the entire month. <laughs> so I had to go online and say, hey, if you're out there and you're seeing this, I am so sorry. It is not my staff. It is not my technology. It was me. I accidentally erased all the orders. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And it was a what? mess. But we worked through it. You know, we did it with kindness. We talked to our customers. The ones who were mad were like, hey, what's it going to take to make you happy? And we fixed that. And then the customers, most of them were like, that was funny. We get it whatever you need we'll do it so it was just a big one whole entire month of hundreds and hundreds of orders we had to redo yeah. move fix all of those but things. you made it happen we made it happen cool so how many hours a week are you putting into this being the business manager the same that i when i started uh you know i'm up at 5 a.m and then we close at nine 
and I'm either here closing or I'm at one of the other shops. And then wrapping things up, I'm usually done about 11. PM? Yeah. Wait, 5 a.m. to 11 yeah. p.m. So you're like living, eating, breathing pizza. Oh yeah. But you know what's really exciting is like, you know, as I build this business up, you know, it's kind of how you just mentioned earlier, how like sometimes, you know, people separate their personal from their business. My business is my personal. And so I'll stop for lunch or I'll go meet somebody, but I'm constantly working because I love it so much. So that's the other thing. Find what you love and enjoy the hours. I don't feel like I'm working. Yeah, so what does that calculate out to? You're like, is that 16 hours a day? Seven yeah, days a I'll week? do between 10 and 16 easy. Okay. Yeah, every day. How long did you work on your own before you brought other people into the picture? So I had no plan on bringing other people into the picture. You were gonna do this I, all yourself? Oh yeah, I did it the one year, the first year, I did it just me here at the table and Nancy at the window. Really? But the demand just got greater and greater and greater. And you know, I was doing like 80 pizzas by myself. So starting out, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna learn what I need to do to become more efficient. Yeah. And so January of the second year, I put out an ad that said, I'm looking for magical people. And I got one guy, and that's Freeman back there. He's the only person that answered the ad. When you got into this, did you have this vision of creating this big thing, or has this just been happening and you've been rolling with it? Oh yeah, I started making 80 right out of the gate, and here we are today making up to 300. And so I did roll with it, because in business, you gotta roll, you gotta flow. So we'll just keep feeding it until it says, I'm full. <laughs> And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to learn more about the food industry, make sure to check out episode 117, where we interview Abe LaGrill, founder Saeed, where he goes into all the details about how he started a business that makes $645,000 per year in the food industry. See you on the next episode.